Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome everybody. I think our focus today is I wanted to continue off um, protecting our private keys, not just writing it down. Um, this is for software wallets, but putting it into a key pass. I couldn't do it because they won't, I can't show key pass screens, but um, I can, we can use some screenshots. Okay. So first I just want to welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I know we only have 30 minutes and see how much we can cover, but thank you for dialing in Misty, Linda, Sonia, Olga, Anto, Mary, Brian, Linda, Jamie, Patricia, Carl, and Isaac. So let's go to it, get right to it. So let me do a roll call right here. Right. So um, I guess I don't want to make an assumption that we know how to use key pass. Um, I mean, even if you're storing it already, I, can, I guess we'll do it there. Who in here stores their private keys uh, digitally, right? So do you store your store? Do you store, um, Isaac, they're all coming in. Um, I'm going to give you co-hosts so I can continue. I mean, maybe we should get people in earlier. Make you co host. Oop. Like, okay, there you go. Co host. All right. So, people are just coming in. So, who here is storing their key, their private keys digitally, right? So, here, put a one in the chat if you store your private keys digitally, right? So, Obviously, we're making, ooh, Brian, loving your background. I was like, okay, that's a Zoom background, right? Or are you really outside? I was like, oh, that looks so nice. Um, I want to be outdoors. So there's snow right now in Toronto. So no one's storing it digitally. Um, so here's the catch. It is software wallet. Sorry, oops, not this one. Software wallet. It is a MetaMask trust wallet. If your computer's already compromised, um. It's 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 you're in big big trouble, but when I'm saying this storing it digitally, right? So now I guess another one, another roll call, roll call. Who here uses a password, a password vault? You know, maybe you have your Android one or your Google one or Key Pass. Put a one if you're already using that. If not, put a two. Um, put a one if you use a password vault. So what is a password vault? So a password vault is you have one master password that keeps tracks of all your passwords. Okay, so this is a password vault, right? So once again, I'm gonna share my screen. There you go. Um, move this to the left side, a password vault. So I think we can actually show um, Password vault. Okay. Password vault. Oh, key pass. Okay. Key pass. I think I shared this key pass. Um, they have we have the screens here, right? So there you go. Quick, quick lesson. This is number one, it's cross-platform. What does that mean? That means it can go different platforms. It can go from Windows to Mac to Android to to iOS. So if you can see, if you go to the download section, um, uh, right, you can see Mac OS, Windows. Okay, this is KeePass XC. I apologize, that's not what I wanted. That's what I used. I used that for. I used that for my Mac. Okay, so here's the original one, KeePass. So number one. It's free, so that's why we're using this. Uh, that's why I promote this one. Key pass, key pass. It's free. It's open source. Open source meaning the code is out there. It's not a black box, meaning that there's nothing hidden. It's lightweight, and it's easy to use, okay? And if you see the download section of this, you can see here how it's Windows, um, it's you can see how it's for Android, iPhone, iPad, like that one file. You have one file that keeps track of your password. You can open it in your Android, in your iPhone, right? In your Mac, in your Windows. Okay, so the one I use for Mac 
is so let me send a screen um a QR code for this. Here's the QR code for people watching the replays and YouTube. Um and then so what I use is the keypass XC for um for Mac keypass XC. This is what I use. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna go over. It should be similar, um, not exact, but this is what we're gonna go over. So once again. This is to store your passwords, okay? So no password. And then right here, no no ads, no nonsense, ad-free, tracker-free, right? Cloud-free manner, free and open source, okay? So I'm going to go over the screenshots. You download this. You can download this for Mac OS. It's going to be similar. So here's the screenshots. I think I did this in our AI accelerator or AI advanced, but here we go. So you download it. Here's the key pass. Here's a file. There's a demo file. It's a database, right? A database is a file um, that keeps data. Uh, here you have that master password. This is very important. This step is important because this master password, I did suggest password tester to use um, a strength meter test. There's a bunch out there. Let's see which one's a good one. Um, password monster. Yeah, there we go. Let's use let's use this one. Maybe this one. Let's go with this one. I like this one better. Let's use this one. Password strength. Please keep this um, in there. I'll put this in the password one. So here's the QR code. Here's the QR code. Okay, so here's the QR code. So this is where you test it, right? So let's see here. Okay, so this one doesn't display uh, password. One, two, three. Okay, maybe not this one because I can't mask it when I'm going to test my real one. Maybe well, let's use this one instead, the passwordmonster.com. Okay, let's use passwordmonster.com because then you can show it or not show it. Here's the QR code, passwordmonster.com. Let's put that to the chat. This is the, like, the most important piece because this one, definitely this shouldn't be swords. That's not what it, password.com. That's not it, password.com, where you test it, right? So for instance, password, one, two, three, very weak. You don't want that. I think even Google suggested one. Use a strong password. Look at that. There's the strong password, very strong. Look at that. 397 billion years to figure this out, right? Obviously, you want something that no one else can figure out. So once again, this is my current password. Uh, I'm sure it's not being displayed. My, one of my current password that I have right now. Okay, my one of my passwords. There you go. Mine can be cracked <laughs> three months. That's one of my Google passwords right now, my main passwords right now. But here's my Azmina and I's password um, in our KeyPass file. Uh, there you go. Wow, 73 years to crack. That's not good. But there you go. 16 characters. Let me see if I mistype. Yeah, 73 years. There you go. So there's that's Azmin and I's password. This one, you don't want this. This is between you, your spouse, or your best friend. Master password. That's what's key. So once again, use this one to test it. Uh, I think I'll go in six minutes. I'll take some questions. So once you have that, you set this up. And then now you name it, you name your file, passwords, Erwin passwords, Azmina passwords. Sometimes I put a timestamp. I sometimes I put um 2024-0320. Uh, and then as I as I increase, um, let me use this. Um let's go here, new easel. So password, uh, best practices, right? So this is. Yeah, usually I put one, um, you know, you want to have uppercase, lowercase, let see if I can make this bigger. Okay, there you go. Uppercase, lowercase, um, you want uh, numbers, and then you want symbols, okay? There you go. Oh, believe it or not, you can even have a space. 
I didn't know that. My my children use a space. That's cool. But here, for instance, for symbols, I think I gave this analogy. If you want to spell an S, you can use the 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 dollar sign, right? So the I. This could be I. Could be this. You could even use L for exclamation point. I. Um, you can use the A for at sign, right? S. Let's see here. I don't know what and sign is, or like zero for O or O for zero, stuff like that. Um, I don't know what ampersand could be. I don't know. Does this look like an S? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. So like you can have as an ampersand, something like that. There you go. So here you go, password best practices. Um, move that over here. Uh, the other one I, I was thinking of, the other one suggestion is, so let's say I have Erwin has, or, Erwin password. I, what I would do is I would go today's date. I'll go 2024 right? I do that as the file name. And then sometimes if I have multiple copies, so let's say I'm making one, I just made a Binance account, then I made a Kraken. So that's my first one. And then, so I have multiple copies because that one last file, then you're in big, big trouble. But I put B. Right, and then if it's tomorrow, it'll probably be twenty one A. That's just the naming of the file. Okay, um, okay. I think I got three minutes. Let's keep going. So that's what you name this database, and then you can leave this, um, unless you're techie, just leave the default. Uh, and then here's this is import. I'm not gonna cover this because you, you know we have another one, so you don't need to import. Um, I'm not gonna cover that. So here, this is what it looks like. Really, really simple. As you can see, it keeps your passwords for your internet, your Apple, your Dropbox, Netflix, and so on, your Google account. Um, but what makes this really, really powerful for cryptos is in this password section, right? So in this case, let me see if I can demo in here. Uh, I think I can annotate. So for instance, here, I would put, um, I don't know, trust, uh, let me go make it. Can I go undo here? Okay. So for instance, I can just put in here, trust, trust wallet one, number one, right? And then I put the username, I don't know, maybe if I have, um, I don't know, Erwin, like let's say if it's Erwin or if it's Mina or my firstborn. And then in the password so that you guys can visualize it, this is where... You know, you have word one, word word one, word two, and then all the way to word 15 or word 25. There you go. And then it's masked. You save it. And then when you need it, that's where you enter it. Okay. That's where you enter it. Um, each of the words. Let me delete this here. Let me delete, annotate, clear, clear. How do I clear? Delete. Oop. Clear all my drawings. And then... After that, stop annotating, annotating. And then that's where you keep your private keys. Um, and same thing, even your, let's say, Coinbase, Uphold, you have your username there, you have your password, so you don't have to remember all of that. Um, there you go. You can put some, some icons. Uh, and it can even help you generate uh, password. So that's what I've done in the past. So I don't have to think about it. There's that new feature. You can play around with that one. And then see, here's the example of keeping your private keys in there. This one is uh, word list. And then uh, I like this feature. Like now you can start putting in your passwords from your exchanges. And then you can even see if it's weak or if you used it before, right? Best practice, you don't want to use the same password. And then I think I'm done. That's it. So um, you can go um you can have like fancy features where it types it for you automatically you can play around with that one but what i wanted to i don't want to overwhelm you guys it was just this feature where you can put your private keys in here why because it's already you have that one master password behind that and just in case you lose your paper your paper gets lost i don't do the paper i don't do that thing because i don't like writing it's already digital anyways once again not for your soft hardware wallet keep that in your keystone tablet this is where because the coinbase DeFi wallet gets overwritten you have to force to put your private keys whether it's sense app that's what happened to me before sense app was called mobi 
wallet, um, all these new wallets, when they get upgraded, you might use that, right? All right, so I'm gonna open up the floor for some questions. Um, and then if you can raise up your Zoom hands or I can answer here. So this is, that's what this is. Tomorrow, Isaac and team will do this. Um, the team will work on with you guys to make sure we have this set up. Um, if you have any questions, you can set it up or not. Um, but I'm telling you, because number one, you, you're testing it, right? You tested your, your private keys. This is quarterly, January, February, March. Is that paper still good? Did it get smudged? Is it written? All that stuff, okay? Let me answer it in the questions. And I, I see Mary, Claudia, and Lindy, and Lorraine. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what happens to your key pass if your last up crashes? So Mary, that's why I say, I said, you email it. So the best practice, what I do is save it to the cloud, or I email it to Asmina. So I email what I do is I email this to myself and to Asmina. I have an email. Sometimes in the past I emailed it to the third person in my will. Um, but I email it to myself and to Asmina. Obviously, they can't touch this file unless they figure out your password, your master password. Make sure that master password says billion years, right? Not like a few weeks if you like it's so easy to figure out. Okay. So that's one. I keep going. And then I'll go with the hands raised. Uh, Claudia, you don't have concerns about being about them being hacked. So Claudia, so number one, um, pick your heart, right? Our mentor Peter, they always say that, pick your heart. So as me and I, I've been doing this since literally two, three years now. Okay, they get that file. They got to figure out the password. That's only in Azmi and I's head, <laughs> right? I mean, neural link being hacked. I'm like, oh my gosh. And that's why this is only for software hot wallets. Remember, this is this is the final state. This is the final state. This is just for software wallets. So Claudia, uh, being hacked, not, not they got to get the file. They can't get, get it unless they know the password. That's why Azmi and I only high and know it in our head. When you have this, when you have a spouse or your best friends for life, it's in your head, not type, not text, not taking a picture. It's in your head um, type of situation, okay? Diane is the key pass on in the cloud. There's some services who does that. I don't use that. I just use my regular Google. It's been out um, and then now it's saved locally in my machine and it's saved locally in her machine. Sometimes it's even on my phone. Um, the file is there. Is that more risk? They have to figure out that master password. Okay, so the files are out there um, without access. Let me use this illustration, Diane, everybody in this call. The kingdom, the gospel is free. Salvation is free. But the kingdom, the kingdom keys, if you don't have the keys, you can't unlock it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what does that mean? If you don't know how to work it, if you don't have the password, you can't use it. Okay. All right. So let me, let's go straight to some questions. If we can limit it to 30 seconds to two minutes, that'll be great. And if it's specific to this first I will prioritize that first versus anything else. Okay, uh, go ahead, Mary. Is Mary is this related to the key pass? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, yes. Mary. Yeah. Um. So on the laptop, I'm trying to uh, uh, the download it, and uh, two point five six. Uh, it says the download now, but installer for Windows, it doesn't have any for Mac. Yeah. So you, if you go once again, um, since you're Mac directly. It's right here. There's, here's the link. This is what you'll see. Download for Mac OS 2.7.7. .7. Okay, this is the one for the Mac OS. Uh, I'll also put it in the QR code. So I don't know. So we have to go for KeyPass XC, not for the, um, uh, not for uh, the KeyPass 2.5. It's, it's easier for us to support you uh, because uh -huh. that's what I use. Uh, oh, okay. The team will, if, the, if you use the other ones in here, so obviously you see here, if you see yeah. downloads, you see here, this is for Windows. This is for Windows, right? Right, right. Uh, so the other download links, this is the original, I guess, the official for the whole concept of the key pass. Uh -huh. uh, for, that's what I said. When you go to downloads here, this is for Windows. This will not work for Mac. This is the one um, for Android, 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 iPhone, iPad, iPhone, iPad, Strongbox. I don't use that one for Mac OS. I don't use KeyPass Companion for Mac OS. Mac Pass, I don't use that. I use the KeyPass XE, XC right here. Linux, Mac, this is what I use. 
right? So it's easier for us to support you. So I use here, download, this is what you use. So okay? do I click the uh, uh, the, the bottom, scroll down, and the key pass XC? Do I, do I click I on just, that one? I just gave you the exact link, right? In this call, here's the exact link, or scan this in your QR code, um, this one. So I'm, I'm giving it to you directly, right? So here it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, so after, you know, uh, it's kind of confusing. So after we set up and set up the uh, the uh, the password, does it automatically the you know is connected to the exchanges that I have? No, 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 no. This this is just a password vault. This is just a password. This is not the API or we're working on it. This is just a password vault. And in this case, we're just using this, not just to store our passwords, but to also store our um, our seed phrase, but it has nothing to do with connections and exchange. It's just to say, hey, what's my what's my password? What's my private keys? It has nothing to do with the connections, no connections whatsoever. Okay, so, and also um, on my phone, because I also do on my phone also, uh, do I, I downloaded the key Patsium. Uh, uh, um, let me check do out I, my phone. Huh? I do, I use something in my phone. Let me check my phone. I use, uh, let me check. Key, I, be, I use key pass touch on my key iPhone. Pass touch. Correct. Okay, so I can just put the other exactly same password that I put in. Uh, no, no you don't need right? you don't need to because you like when you set it up on your MacBook. Remember uh -huh. this file. This file you can use it in any platform. Um, it's like it's like a text file. It's like a Word file. It's like an HTML file. You can open up with any of those apps. So that that app that I showed you, the iPhone, when you set it up one time in your MacBook, you can open it up with that app and your. Uh, thing you don't need to set up the password because it's just it's 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 gonna be you have to use that same password to open it. Okay, so both I have to use the same password on both MacBook and iPhone to open that file. So whatever okay. you use to create the file the first time, highly suggest do not use the Mac the iPhone to create it. Use the MacBook. MacBook. Right? MacBook. Yes. First. So for instance, I would open up my Gmail, and I'm like a brand new phone. I would send that file to my Gmail and then I'll open up the file. I mean, obviously I have to read it, but then all the passwords I need, if it's a new phone, if it's a new laptop, bam, I have all my passwords in there. I send that file to my Mac, my iPad, my iPhone, wherever, and then I have access to all my passwords, all my private keys with that one master password. Okay. Does that make sense, Mary? Um, you know, first I would have to set up and then see what. Correct. Piece by piece. I can understand. Yeah, piece by piece. It's like a password vault. I don't know if you've used, guys, if you've used, you know, in your iPhone or your Android, same password or your Google Chrome, same password, same concept. It's just saving the password for you automatically. Uh, but this one, it's a file and it's outside the browser. It's outside the app. Uh, sorry, it's outside the phone where now you can use it to all platforms. So you've okay, used, so Mary, you've another... used the same password feature, correct? Pardon me? You've used that same password feature in your phone? Yes, yes. Same concept, exact same concept. Then another question is, so after I set up the password on MacBook and iPhone, you know, I have to sometimes go into different exchanges and I have to uh, put password and uh, the two authenticator. Do I do the very same thing again? You you can choose you can store your password in there for your exchanges, right? Because what a lot of people do is they write it down. I don't have a notebook. They write it down in their notebook, but that's what uh -huh. said. You have a secondary backup. What happens if your notebook burns down or you lose it or someone stole it? Uh, obviously, you can reset your password, but then putting it in there does two things. It has a backup, and number two, it tells you if it's a weak password or not. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. No problem, Mary. All right. Go ahead, Lindy. Okay. Um, my question is not about key pass, so you might want to come back to me. It's about a password problem with my ledger. Password problem with your ledger. Okay. Yeah, I'll go back to you. All right. Uh, Lorraine, go ahead. Um, hi, Ovin. Hey, Lorraine. Uh, hi, hi. I uh, tried transferring some um, XRP from Binance. Yeah, let's, 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 let's see if we can go all the... He passed questions first, Lorraine. Oh, okay. 
Okay, and then put you behind the scenes, and then we'll go another rotation. Uh, Claudia, is it a key pass? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yes. I want to know, um, okay, so after I set up the key pass, is this going to, or I can tell it the passcode for the key pass to save to my Google account? Anything you, uh, or you can have whatever you want um, to store in there. That's what it's designed for. It's designed for mm -hmm. your emails. Uh, once again, I'll show it to you guys in the screenshot. Sure. See how you can store your Apple, your Dropbox, mm -hmm. your Netflix, whatever you want, even your Google. That's the whole idea of this. We're using it and we're extending the use of it by storing mm -hmm. private keys as well in there. Right. Yeah. So this is a this is like a backup to what's stored with the with the Google. Like Google, uh -huh. when I if I save my my username, correct. Or if, you're, if you're already using that, I mean it's there. So let's but then let's say your Google, mm -hmm. like you lose your Google, you lose your laptop. This mm -hmm. is a backup mm -hmm. of that. Very good. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's what I want. No problem. All right. Okay, we have four minutes. Uh, going back to Lindy. Let's see how we can cover here. Go ahead, Lindy, and then we'll go Lorraine. She is spending our time, and I see you as well. We tried to reset our password on our ledger. And my husband was watching over my shoulder and writing words down as our numbers down as I was doing it. Um, but at some point he started copying what I was writing instead of watching. And, and at some point I got a duplicate number in there. So now um, the password doesn't work. I mean, the pin, the pin, the pin, correct. Not working. And so is there any way now to save it or have I lost my wallet now? Because we don't know what the pin is now. So the pin so now, guys, we're done on the key pass. This is a whole, a whole new situation um, um, for hardware wallets. So the pin, you lost your pin, but you still have the private keys? I have the private keys. The pin that we were trying to change uh, to a new pin got misentered and misrecorded. Correct. So if you enter your, I think if you enter your pin incorrectly three times, the ledger will automatically reset. Okay, we were afraid to do that third time because we thought correct, it, but... correct. So that's why I would advise getting a secondary, getting a secondary, um, um, getting a secondary um ledger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did you put four digits or six digits or lot more? Well, it's supposed to be nine digits, and accidentally I wrote down ten. Somehow, I got it wrong when I was tapping it in. Yeah, and writing. I would suggest, um, Lindy, what I would suggest, I've, done, I've dealt with this in the past, buy a second ledger and restore the private keys in there. Okay. okay and if the if the private keys doesn't work, our last, last resort, um, then contact me because like, then we'll figure out, let's go with this first um, okay. before this other one because this other one, um, that's a different situation. I'll 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 address that preferably live. I we had a similar call to this. So try to res try to get a second ledger and restore the private keys. If that happens, you're good. Because then if this resets, it doesn't matter. You can re like now you have this for that one. You can put this one as a new one. Um, so let's go with that first, Lindy. Because the third one, I don't want you to enter the third one and your private keys is incorrect. I'll I'll show you another strategy if we have to go with a, that plan B. Okay, no problem. Okay, we have one minute. Hopefully, I can do this. Go ahead, Lorraine. Hi. Yeah. Um. Hi. So I um I tried transferring XRP from Binance to a new Ledger Live, and I only did a small test amount of ten XRP. That was on Saturday. I'm still waiting for it to arrive. Any suggestions? Do Do you have a transaction ID? Uh, I can go back and look for it. Yeah. It's so minor. anytime you do a transaction, the, what that's what's powerful about the blockchain. Once it's yeah. done, it's done, right? So then you have to, but you have to figure out where where it's stuck. Is it in the source, or is it in the network, or is it in the target? So you're sending from your Binance to your ledge, ledger, correct? Yeah. So from Binance, did you get a confirmation that Binance said we sent it away, Lorraine, or not? Yeah, I did. Okay. So then you got that. Um, and then now you get that transaction ID. If that transaction ID says it's there, like you have to see the transaction. When they say they sent it, it should say success or failure failed. Um, so let me know once you get that, because if it says success, it's there. And then it might be the ledger that's uh, corrupted. Okay. The I ledger did, live, the ledger I, live. I apologize. Yeah. I did it successfully with XLM first. 
but it's mm-hmm. just XRP that has Yeah, so what what ends up happening um if if you if Binance says it's good, if it's good and then it says successful in the transaction ID, there's a good chance that Ledger Live might be corrupted and you might have to install the Ledger Live. That's what sounds okay. Like. okay? Thank you. All right, no problem. Misty also having trouble with Ledger XRP. If you can help these minds, seems to be problem because we reset the Ledger. Let me see if I can get yours, Misty, real quickly. Go ahead, Misty. Hi, can you hear me? Oh yes. Okay, so uh oh. I have a picture, but it says something went wrong. I'm sending XRP from Coinbase to Ledger. Um, so XRP and a couple of the other ones are the ones that will not work. My other ones have worked because I reinstalled all the apps like um, support told me to. But the yeah. XRP work, and it seems to be because we did reset the Ledger. So you can't send that. So you can't send the the XRP from your ledger to Kinesis. Where you, where's the source and the target? So, uh, so Coinbase to put it on my ledger. Okay. So same thing. Did Coinbase say it's good and you have a transaction ID? Uh, I won't even let me get that far. I can't even get the address. You can't get the address from Ledger for the XRP. Yeah, that, that would probably me more time. So tomorrow in the working session, um, assuming everyone has time, then hopefully we'll get that thing going or the support because I need to see the screens and all that. So same thing. Um, when it's like Coinbase, did you put it in the allow list? Or you can't even get the address. You can't even get the address. Correct. Yeah. So that, yeah, we, that'll be that's something deeper. So I have to we have to go in the screens <laughs> and all of that, or the one on one with the, the team uh, or myself, right? So that, and then hopefully tomorrow we'll have more time when we do the breakout rooms. Okay, okay. all right, okay. all right, guys. 